There are times in one's career that you really do have to hold your hand up and say, okay, I was wrong. So you want to know what I was wrong about? Keep watching. My name's Andrew Berry and welcome to At The Benches YouTube channel. In the past, I've always gone on about torches, finding the hottest point, the sweet spot, and you've seen me get the torch. You've seen me light the torch. You've seen me get a bit of a, a block in front of me, hold the flame up, and I do this sort of trick, and I bring the flame quite close. It gets really bright, you take the flame away, and that orange area diminishes. The hottest part of the flame, yes, is the tip of that cone. That uh, how, Can I show you on this? Here we go. Yes, I can. So the, the hottest part, yes, is this little area by here. That is the tip. That is the hottest part. You bring something too close into that and it's not hot. I've done this before. I'll put the, the, the flame, the film. What's the, what's the torch, Andrew? I'll put the film up by here that I'm referring to. You bring the torch too close, you get that black circle in the middle, take it away and so forth. Anyway, go and check out the film. So that is the hottest part of the flame. But is it the best part? Is it the right part of the flame to use? Well, if you think about you want to heat up a piece really, really quickly, get it on that sweet spot. That's the hottest part. But it's very um, limiting. It's very small. There's no excess heat or flame really around that cone. And you see me do some films where we solder sort of indirectly. We don't even really let the flame um, touch the item, touch the piece that was soldering itself. We use the, the heat that comes on the outside of that flame to heat the job. So why do we do that? Well, it's because sometimes if we put that cone, that tip, right on the jump ring that we're soldering, it's going to be too hot. And it's likely that that bit of metal is going to melt. And that's no good. That's no good for anybody. So I'm just going to get some little silver jump rings in front of me here, and I'll show you what I mean. Um, also, if you are using a third hand like this and you're holding a ring in the third hand or you're using one of these little steel trivets or something like a wire wig uh, to heat the piece from beneath, if you use that, sh that little point of that flame, the area is not going to get hot enough because these little things like this, the trivet, the third hand and a soldering wig will sap the heat. So if you can get a broad flame, a larger area of flame on that extra piece of metal, that will warm up a lot quicker. Then you can concentrate your efforts upon the piece that you are soldering. So what do, what do I mean? So again, when we look at the flame here, yes, this part by here is the hottest part, but this area over here has some heat as well. So if we were heating up for argument's sake, a third hand, just so it doesn't sap the heat away. I would not necessarily be coming along with that point directly onto the tweezers here because I'm only going to be heating a small area. I'll be moving the torch away from those tweezers to get a broader flame to heat more of the area quicker. Hope that makes a bit of sense. All right, let's just do a little bit of an experiment. Let's get some jump rings into place and let's see if we can melt them using the tip and see if we can not melt them by bringing that flame away. Okay, so we're just going to get a couple of jump rings. These are pre-made jump rings. Slot them together. And Put a couple of these together. Let me show you what I mean. Let's put a couple more together. And, and I will quickly show you what I mean. A little tip when you come to put together jump rings like this. They're normally machine cut. You don't have to go 
opening the links. You don't have to open the links up like this to put them together to do that. So that's two steps, isn't it? What you can do, let's take that one off there, is just simply slot them together. We've got, let me pick up two new ones from here just to show you so you know I'm not cheating. So here's two jump rings. They've already got a bit of a twist to them already. You can just come along and if the camera can focus. There we go. You can just simply slot the jump rings together like that and then just simply close it. Just another little step that you don't have to bother with opening the jump ring and then closing it. All right, anyway, that's beside the point. Okay, so we've got our couple of little jump rings by here. Let's put one with the jump ring joint at the top of that one. And likewise with this one here. So that's gonna show you that we don't really need the flame directly on these links. I know I've shown you this before, but this is a great indication. You don't always need that tip of the flame to be on the job. I've got some paste solder onto there like that, some silver paste solder onto there like that. So we're gonna do this one by here first of all. And so we're gonna put the torch on, we're gonna bring the flame in. So I'm gonna use the point of the flame on this, bring it in, solders but you can see how quickly the rest of that jump ring actually got up to temperature it virtually virtually melted quick but I'm just gonna bring the flame now over here and as you can see we're gonna bring the bushy part of the flame not the tip but the bushy part of the flame towards that joint and bring it down slowly and solder it's a far more controlled way of soldering than just putting the tip onto the jump ring and fingers crossed hoping that that solder will melt before the actual link melts let me just quickly do that again and also because now i've soldered that other link it was a little bit more delicate if you put too much heat onto it there is a chance now that that other solder is going to come undone because of the amount of heat we're putting onto it let's put a bit of solder on there again and a solder on there you really do have to be careful when it comes to soldering you've got to be careful with the control of the torch again here we go tip of the torch onto that jump ring very quick but very very risky with this one, a lot more controlled. Bring the broad area, don't forget the tip is by here. Bring that broad area towards that jump ring. There we go, much more controlled. We are basically bringing it close onto that jump ring. With this jumping over here, the flame was right on that joint. There is a chance then that the rest of the joints down here will come and done. With this one, we con concentrated the flame off the jump ring. We bought, brought the torch towards. The heat over this side that we're not soldering is not as great to melt the solder. And we got a nice controlled flame coming onto it. And as soon as the solder flows, take the flame away and it's soldered. So, if you also, if you look, you can see how sort of how dirty that one link is or those links are that we did originally. The flame is too hot. If that point of the, the torch is far, far too hot, you don't get anywhere by using that tiny little area if you're trying to solder very, very small little intricate jump rings or any intricate pieces because it's just too much heat. You don't need that, uh, that amount of heat on that pinpointed area. It's better to use a slightly bushier flame that is, can be controlled a lot easier but it's bringing it down onto that piece. And that also works in respect of, say you're soldering the ring shanks, for instance, because if you put the cone, the tip of that torch 
onto the solder that you're using to solder a ring shank for argument's sake, the heat is so great that that solder will melt first before the rest of the metal is up to temperature. And if you overheat the solder, you will ruin the properties, the flowing properties of that solder. And this is the problem a lot of people will get because they use that, that pinpoint of the flame. The solder melts first because it's the smallest area and it just overheats and the solder will not flow. The rest of the metal then will get to the correct temperature. You expect that solder to flow and it just doesn't flow because you burnt all the properties, you burnt all the other alloys out of it and all the flowable properties have gone. So you use a nice bushy flame, you bring the torch back, it's a larger, broader area of heat that heats up the rest of the item or the area that you're soldering, bringing that up to temperature. The solder won't necessarily melt as quick because it doesn't have that intense heat on it. It's a broader heat. The whole piece gets up to the correct temperature and it's the piece then that actually conducts the heat through to the solder. The solder then will melt because the rest of the metal has got up to temperature and you'll get a lovely, gorgeous solder joint. Hope that all that makes sense to you. I ramble on a bit, but to be honest, you've got to understand the properties and understand how the torch works and how solder works and how flux works. Anyway, I'll shut up now. Don't forget, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. Smash that little bell icon if that is something that you're into. Don't forget, please, you know the score. Give this film a thumbs up if you like it, share it with your friends, I absolutely love you too. And in the meantime, my name is Andrew Berry for At The Benches YouTube channel. Take care, I will see you next time. Bye bye. I have been giving you false information. Mm, that's wrong, because if I'm saying that, that makes I'm a liar. I'm not a liar. There comes a time that, no, there comes a time. <laughs> What's the time? Wow, oh, hang on, get on, okay. Hands up, I'm wrong, I have been wrong, I am wrong, no. Flipping motorbike was going by. Oh, God, I must have a shave. Oh, I guess it's itchy. Oh. oh, my God. What's that fleece is having? Makeup, makeup, can we have some makeup to cover up my scabby neck, please? Thank you. <laughs> oh dear, to be a superstar, eh? Of course, I'm a jeweler, not an actor. Oh God, I'm mixing all over now. Oh, oh, oh. oh my gosh, I want to go on.